Hello, this is the podcast for Chapter 9 on Distribution Channels, and it's a reduced podcast because I just wanted to give you 15 minutes of the essentials. Most of you will recall from your Principles of Marketing class that distribution channels encompass the place aspect of marketing, and it refers to the process and the players by which the product flows from producer to the customer. Distribution channels are critically important because it is the place at which the customer typically comes into contact with the manufacturer's product. So the goals of effective distribution are to make sure that there aren't inefficiencies and redundancies in the system that drive up the cost of doing business and create conflict. This requires effective relationships and alliances with major distribution partners with a focus on the end user to make sure that their needs are being met. And it must be done with both cost efficiencies and customer satisfaction. There are two main types of distribution channels. The first one is called a direct channel in which the manufacturer distributes directly to the customer or end user, meaning that there are no intermediaries. Direct channels give manufacturers full control over their marketing strategy, and a direct channel could include when a company has its own sales force. For example, Apple Computer uses its own sales force to call on universities as a major customer. When a company has its own dot-com website, that handles orders and fulfillment for individual customers. And in the case of company-owned retail outlets, again, as in the case of an Apple-owned store. These can all be very expensive distribution channels, but they do afford the company the opportunity to manage its brand in the way that it wants by delivering its customers' experience consistent with its goals. Indirect channels rely on an intermediary, and the flow of product would go from the manufacturer to some sort of a retailer and then to the customer. And the primary reason for using intermediaries is because it affords contact efficiencies in the channel, which means if there are three manufacturer brands, say Dell, Asus, and Apple, and there are three consumers looking for goods, if every consumer had to go to every manufacturer to do this, it would be three times three or nine interactions. But if each consumer has to go to one retailer and each manufacturer deals through one retailer, then it's three plus three interactions. And even online, many consumers prefer to shop through an intermediary simply because of these contact efficiencies. Indirect channels are also based on the idea of core competencies. Manufacturers have competencies in product innovation, marketing, and distribution. Distributors have competencies in handling customer fulfillment, customer inquiries, warranty service, etc. And based on these core competencies, companies find it makes sense to rely on intermediaries. As the saying goes, you can cut out the middleman, but you can't cut out their functions. Either manufacturers or customers must provide those functions. A hybrid channel essentially relies on multiple methods of distribution. As you see here, In the middle level, manufacturers can go direct on some cases, such as Apple, to the education system. They can rely on resellers in some situations, for example, when they use uh, stores like Best Buy. And then in international markets, they may use a distributor or an export agent before it actually reaches a reseller in another country. In direct sales channels, the fact is sales personnel and marketing personnel oftentimes have conflict over the best allocation of marketing dollars. And I would just like to highlight that sales often is viewed as a direct distribution channel, 
Marketing people want to spend money on branding and advertising, but salespeople want to see that money spent in commission and uh, trade dollars. Another source of conflict with direct channels can be when a company has its own sales over its .com website, but then it competes with retailers such as a Best Buy or an Amazon.com. And in this particular case, the various channels can actually cannibalize each other. And again, it's important to consider core competencies and costs in maintaining what's called a brick and click distribution model. It's a type of hybrid channel. Company-owned retail outlets are gaining more popularity for high-tech companies. For example, Microsoft has opened its own. And the idea here is that it provides control over the customer experience. But every time the company opens its own retail store, it can cause conflict with intermediaries and other channels. So the source of channel conflict needs to be managed carefully. In high-tech markets, there are many different types of intermediaries. And this next slide essentially characterizes them. A VAR is a value-added reseller. A VAD is a value-added dealer. These are local resellers that essentially purchase manufacturers computer equipment, hardware and software, and then they bundle it together and customize it for vertical markets. For example, a local uh, VAR was Pyron Technologies and they essentially bundle different hardware and software for the medical um, clinics and medical uh, offices. Systems integrators often do quite a bit of consulting on large projects. There can be inbound resellers that essentially take 800 calls. Outbound resellers have their own sales force. And of course, traditional intermediaries that we as consumers are familiar with, such as Costco, Walmart, um, Best Buy, etc. As I mentioned, managing hybrid channels is critically important because they can have quite a bit of conflict. And in the book, there's a nice model that goes over how to manage hybrid channels in a very efficient way. I'd like to highlight this because some of our speakers this semester have focused on the importance of distribution. And distribution requires its own strategic planning, as does product management and advertising and communication. The hybrid channel model does follow the familiar contingency model that we introduced in Chapter 1, with the idea being that the type of channel to optimize channel performance has to be matched appropriately to the tasks that the channel should perform and the target markets that it goes after. Other considerations in hybrid or multi-channel marketing is whether the relationship with resellers is very relational in a relationship marketing sense or more adversarial, and how companies use customer relationship management to engage in transactions with their resellers. Compensation structure is a big part of managing retail relationships, as is collaborative communication. The final part of distribution channel management broadens the lens to include incoming supplies for the company. The idea here of incoming components in the manufacturing process if it is a hardware company and the idea of managing these life cycles of high-tech products. Intel is another example of a high-tech company that has really worked hard to manage its supply chain because the cost of its chips is uh, so dependent on high expense ingredients. There are two ways to manage supply chain. There are demand uncertainties that come from the difficulty of predicting end user demand. And you see that demand uncertainty can be low for incremental innovations or high for breakthrough innovations. And then we also have supply uncertainty that relates to the raw materials. And again, we have low or high supply uncertainty. Based on this, there's a picture in the textbook about four different types of supply chains. But I just wanted you as students to know that there's a nice framework for this. I'm not sure that many of you will be working in a physical arena in terms of needing to manage these supply chain uncertainties. 
The last topic I find very interesting is how supply chains are being changed to address the needs for sustainability or to be environmentally friendly. This is a huge topic today and as you know we're adding courses about sustainability in our business school curriculum and I encourage you to be attuned to these particularly with your focus on biomimicry and other topics related to renewable energies.